Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Scott, uh, estimator here in the office, and uh, I get to play with numbers. So today I get to torture you guys with numbers. Um, sounds silly, but we're going to talk about fractions and how much fun they are and where they come into play. And um, <clears throat> surprisingly, a little bit about fractions, but this will not be a math class. It's uh, actually more of a class on observation than anything. Um, and we're going to start out with, and I didn't want to blow it right off the bat, when we talk about fractions, it starts off like I did in elementary school, all about the pizza. Fractions are just breakdowns, and it comes back to that number one. Um, the number one we see here. And the number one you see everywhere, one inch, one foot, one as a whole. Um, when you talk about fractions, fractions are nothing more than an, um, a division problem. One over eight looks just like the division symbol because it's, that's on purpose, believe it or not. It's just supposed to be one over eight. We're not going to get into the math part of it, but we're going to talk about where all that comes into play comes into play when you talk about scale, when you talk about the four plans like Joe was doing. Um, the four plans, they come in one eighth, they come in a quarter, they come in a half inch, depending on how much they want to show, how much they can show. Uh, the limits of the paper often make our houses at one eighth. Then you can get to a quarter inch if they start showing partial plans, and then half inch for room details. When you get into the details, like Joe was talking about on the plans, they start off with things like three eighths, three quarters, inch and a half, three inch. You kind of like watch those numbers, there's a fun little pattern to it. And then there's what I call the devil scale, which is three sixteenths, which shouldn't exist anywhere because it defies all logic. Uh, one eighth, one half, one quarter, three quarters, all those numbers make sense when you look at a plan. You look at an eighth, it's easy to divide in your mind. Oh, I can make an eighth. And it's like, you separate things. I can do three feet, three sixteenths, just right. Three sixteenths, when you see that scale, just you have to be pay a lot more attention. Um, so we're going to talk today about the fractions. I'm also going to mention a thing called uh, Algebra's Pythagorean Theorem. And again, it's not a math class. So we're gonna start off with the breakdown of an inch, and that's these little pages here. That little page also goes to this fun thing, because this is basically one of the greatest things to have with you. So if you get to the 16th, one inch, zero to one, gets broken down into 16 parts. And just kind of watch the fun here, because one sixteen, two, three, four, five, six, 16. But then two sixteenths, that turns into the one eighth, which are all, everyone likes the one eighth. Then you can get to the quarter, because again, these things break down. So as you see it, eight sixteenths, oh, that's two fourths, and it's one half. It, but it's all here. I know it sounds like I'm saying a lot, but I'm really not, because the half inch mark will always be the half inch mark. You just have to know it can also be called eight sixteenths. When you're getting into the millwork and other kind of fun things, they're going to talk about sixteenths. After sixteenths comes this other thing called a CH. That's the Carl Hart. Um, and if you're in millwork, in rough carpentry, the CH is your one eighth, and in uh, millwork, it's the one sixteenth. And anything smaller than that becomes the CH. So we all know that part. If not, ask the guy next to you later on. Um, so. We see there that these fractions, again, just fractions, but they have different names meaning the same thing. So just keep that in your head as you're looking at this stuff because it's when you say 9 sixteenths, it sounds horrible, but it's right there between 1 half and 5 eighths. So it's not, it's not terrible. <laughs> um, the scales, too, when they talk about the eighth and the quarter, also realize when you're holding this, you're out there and you're looking at plans, this thing works on plans, too, because if it says one eighth or one quarter, you can sit there and go 
and count out. You know there's eight eighths in an inch. So you know for every inch when you're looking at a plan, that's one foot. So eight feet, sorry. Um, so you can count out and do quick little measurements as you're out there, all because of this thing. Also wanted to point out, and Wes remind me of this one, you're carrying two calculators when you're out there. You have the calculator on your phone. This thing's also a calculator. You can sit there and go, okay, I can do this. <laughs> Wes reminded me, if I'm at three feet, what's half of three feet? Well, I do this and I know I'm coming up to 18 inches. Calculator, it's all here. You're carrying it around. Inch breakdown is here. Uh, I also did it so that you could see fractions, fra uh, fractions going into decimals. Um, even the stock market used fractions up until 2001. All of the little stocks used to come down, broken down to 1 16th. Um, 2001, they went to decimals. You can do decimals. A again, the fractions actually tell you the math problem. You're sitting there with your calculator. What is 1 8th? And that's, I say 1 8th because that's the important one because it's 0.125. That 0.125, if you remember that, you know, twice that is a quarter, 0.25. Sorry, I didn't do quarter there. Did it. So it's just a way to look at the 0.125 as one eighth as a way to figure out other things. For the five eighths, for three quarters, it all comes up. Three quarters is 0.75, which also divides by 0.125. I didn't mean to go into math, but I just wanted to point out there are decimal equivalents to all of these fractions that we're dealing with, which we call inches. Um, now I'm gonna talk about multiplying and dividing fractions. And I know I promised no math, and there really is no math with this part. Uh, some of you know this trick. We all know one. One's the whole, one's one, one inch, one foot, one. One is just one over one in the fraction. Then you have half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch. Sixteenth, thirty second. That's everything we're gonna deal with. So you, the magic here is right here on this bottom line. You're out in the field, you wanna know what ten foot six and three quarter inches is in half. The ten is easy. I can do five feet. Six inches, again, easy, three inches. Three quarters of an inch. You can break out your calculator, take three quarters of an inch and come in each way. But if you look at the bottom, if you double the bottom, you've cut the fraction in half. You wanna know what th half of three quarters is? It's three eighths. You wanna know what half of half is? It's one quarter. Is that, is that making sense? So in order to divide a fraction, you multiply it quickly in your head. And the nice thing is it's all easy numbers on the bottom with we deal with, you know, one, two, four, eight. Division's just the opposite. If you wanna know what, I'm sorry, multiplication is just the opposite. If you wanna know what twice that is, you half the bottom. Good? That's it, that was for me the biggest wow moment in my life because I always had to do it on paper. Oh, numerator, denominator, all that crap, you know, keep the numerator, don't need that. Just need to double the bottom or half the bottom. So that is my huge wow moment for this whole class. If you look at the transition of scale on the plans, you got the eighth, quarter, half, same thing. As it gets bigger, the, uh, the plans get bigger. So now you can see it, but you see why they do the transition on plans and start getting it larger with each of these. Same thing with the details, but they talk to each other. Double three eighths is three quarters. Double three quarters is inch and a half. Even if you think it through, if you're out in the field, I have to do twice three quarters. Well. That's gonna be three, and then I have to double the bottom, like half the bottom, I'm sorry. So it becomes three over two. 
That's ridiculous. You can't have three over two because it doesn't eat, make anything. The two is the two. So if you take a two away from the three, it leaves you with one left. Not to go into that math area. So the two goes into two once, leaves a half left over. So the three quarter becomes inch and a half. You double 1.5, which is inch and a half, that gets you to the three inch. Now you're looking at the drawings and Joe's asking you to look at a detail and you see the detail here goes inch and a half scale, then it goes to three inch scale, you know it's doubling in size. That's why the architects do that, to help you so you can course, it makes sense. Like, I know it probably doesn't make sense, but it will over time as you keep looking at these, that when you're looking at something at an eighth and then it becomes a quarter, it's a natural doubling. The three sixteenths is the devil's scale and that'll never work. But these others help you look at stuff as they, as they transition double. There's a fluidity to that kind of um, change in scale. Again, you see it, you know, as something as simple as a pizza pie, it's a whole, it's a half, it's a third. It's that same fraction thing, one over, one over. And, you know, six pieces of pie makes a whole pie. You know, three pieces can make a whole pie. That's where it all goes back to. The last thing I'm going to talk on, which is, again, tying in with uh, what Joe starts talking about when he says, um, <clears throat> when he talks about layout and benchmarks and how to do things, you guys are out in the field, you don't have a square, you don't need one. Um, this is Pythagorean's theorem. It's a three, four, five uh, triangle rule that states if a triangle has a constant ratio of three, four, five, the side lengths, then the triangle is a right triangle. <coughs> the three, four, five triangle satisfies the Pythagorean theorem, which uses the sides of a triangle to prove that it is a right triangle. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All of this is you don't need to know. Again, the guy I worked with, said, oh, we got to square up the room. And I'm like, I'll go get a square. He goes, you don't need to. Pull out your tape measure. It's three, four, five. Again, college boy sitting there, what the hell are you talking about? And he goes, I don't know. It's three, four, five, you know, six, eight, ten. He goes, these things square up a room. Three, four, five triangle will get you square. You need to square up a room. You go out. You measure out three feet. Four feet. Go ahead, mark on the table. I'm telling, but you know, you can. And then when we get over here, when you do your tape measure, and the important part is to be consistent there. Three, four, five. Three feet, four feet, five feet, you have a square corner. No tools, nothing fancy, no lasers. You're out there, somebody's complaining that something's out of whack, you just need to do a quick check. Um, but the three, four, five works. Oops. Three, four, five works. If you remember three, four, five, you can turn it into anything just by doubling them. So six, eight, 10, nine, 12, 15. Depending on the size of the room and how much you can get, that'll get determine how um, accurate you can get your uh, right angle. And, and it works horizontally, vertically, if you need to check plumb. That's another thing that people will complain about. Again, go six feet up the wall, eight feet out, and you should be able to drag out to 10 feet. Again, we had the breakdown of inches well, fractions, as you saw, fractions, again, with the bottom. As they get smaller, the bottom gets bigger. Uh, I don't know if that helps to remember. So a half of one is one half, half of one half is one quarter, one eighth, one sixteenth, one thirty-second. Inversely, cutting the thirty-second in half, you go back the other way. So. Um, Scales, we talked about scales, but now you start seeing why they change the sizes the way they change sizes. Um, 
The tape measure, again, you know, a sixteenth can be called sixteenth, sixteenths, eight eighths, four fourths. It's, it's there, it's a bunch of little things. All the numbers in between have different names, but they're all the same thing. The sixteenth is what we like because it answers, it gets down to the uh, degree of detail that we need to get to for the most part. And then just back to Pythagorean theorem. Questions? There is a quiz. I'll go get it. <laughs> I just, when you do the three, four, five, does it matter which side of the tape measure you use to do the measurements? Thank you. Uh, it does. I kind of glossed over that part. If you're taking it, you do have to be consistent on the side of the tape measure you use because it is a pretty precise calculation, believe it or not. So if you're using this side of the tape, you have to use this side of tape here, here, and especially when you come across the top of the triangle, which if anyone cares, it's called the hypotenuse. But the angled leg, you especially have to be on the same side of the tape measure. Otherwise, whatever the width of your tape measure is, you're suddenly going to find you're off in terms of trying to figure out square or plumb. Thank you. Um, the papers are here if anything interests you. Uh, we especially enjoyed making the pizza one. Um, any of this stuff, please take it, look at it. If you have questions, give a shout out. Um, I try to know this stuff. So. Thanks, Josh. Well, thank you. Go eat donuts this week. Nobody eats donuts. <laughs>